It's Thursday, December 2nd, and this is now on HNN. And I can guarantee you, uh, Vice Admiral Williamson, if you smell this water that I allowed the chairman to smell before this hearing started, you would know that something's wrong with this water. Hawaii Congressman Kai Kahele and furious residents question the military's response to the water contamination issue plaguing the Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam area. President Biden visited the National Institutes of Health to unveil his plan to battle the Omicron variant. I'm Deborah Alfaron at the White House with the ways this might affect you as you travel this holiday season. And it doesn't include shutdowns or lockdowns, but widespread vaccinations and boosters and testing and a lot more. Plus, a cold front is approaching. That means flooding is possible this weekend. Guys, got the details coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon, everyone. Jonathan and Ashley's back in the H&N Digital Center today. Thanks for watching This Is Now. Let's get right to today's top stories. Navy leaders are on Capitol Hill today, and Hawaii Congressman Kai Kahele questioned them about their response to the water contamination issue in the Pearl Harbor area during a congressional hearing. Here's some of what was said. As you can see here, there is a sheen on this drinking water. This is taken out of somebody's kitchen, Navy family housing at Pearl Harbor. And I can tell you myself that if you smell this water, you would know that there is something wrong with this water. There's a petroleum product in this water. Right now, the Navy is relying on community donations and using water tankers to distribute clean water to residents. You can smell some type of petroleum chemical in the water. The Department of Health and the University of Hawaii has con confirmed the petroleum in the water, and there have been concerns on the community for years on the possibility of leaks from Red Hill into the drinking water supply. This is a mother walking up to a water distribution site with a five-gallon jug so that she can take a shower last night. And yet the Navy seems totally unprepared for this situation that has now impacted the military's own service members and families, and what is happening on the ground in Hawaii right now is absolutely unacceptable. And I understand the operational importance of Red Hill facility to our military today and our military's readiness in the future. However, there have been three reported fuel leaks on Oahu in the last 20 months, and we need answers. So we just heard from Representative Kahele there, and we're getting more reaction into our, our newsroom hour by hour, really. Casey Lund joining us now. What are you hearing? Well, actually, Lieutenant Governor Josh Green is also now chiming in on this, and he just put out a statement that said it's fully unacceptable, totally unacceptable, for fuel to be leaking into the water that our children and our families drink. It has to be fixed immediately. We must keep everyone safe, no matter what it takes, and we must act now. And you heard the congressman there really kind of grilling the those Navy officials this morning, um, the highest levels of the U.S. Navy, and their answer is similar to what we heard in the town hall last night, that we are working on this, we're investigating, but no real solid information that reassured folks really that much. We'll get to more on that town hall in just a moment, but I wanted you to recap our viewers on what we really learned from DOH yesterday. Really important stuff. Yeah, it is. So there were samples that were taken from Red Hill Elementary School. Those samples were confirmed to contain a petroleum-like substance. Now, those are uh, preliminary tests, and they want to do more tests. They were confirmed by DOH, U of, uh, University of Hawaii as well. So they are still going to be testing those samples. And again, for those folks that are on the Navy's water system, they're advising obviously not to drink that water and oral hygiene, taking a bath. And that was the other thing. We talked to parents this morning at Nimitz Elementary School um, and uh, folks that were at that town hall last night about how frustrating it is that this is how they're finding out about it. One gentleman said he found out first from the school rather than his command, his Navy leaders. Um, and here's just some of the interactions, some of the things people had to say at that town hall. A lot of emotions running very high uh, during that meeting. There's been so much misinformation, no information, nothing given to the residents here. I have called since Sunday. We are working to get everyone working towards the same goals, and that is to, to take care of our people. My children took a bath, and for 45 minutes afterwards, they complained of burning skin. On Monday, I woke up sick, 
and I've been dizzy ever since. And Casey, let's talk about this. There's concern out there that contamination might spread to other water supplies, right? That's true. So the Navy system is fed by the Halava, Wyava, and Red Hill uh, drainage systems. And so there is concern that some of this could potentially leak into some of those other systems and um, be involved or... uh, present in some other drinking water on Oahu. Border Water Supply has not confirmed that yet, but they're keeping a very close eye on things. Uh, They have even reduced the amount of water that they drain from uh, some of those systems and are increasing their own testing just to be safe. And it does seem like Border Water Supply is very actively handling this and providing people with updated information as soon as they get it. So that is good news. Let's talk about this, Casey. How can people get help? if they need it with their water. Yeah, well, I want to talk about this. Uh, One of the women I talked to at Nimitz Elementary said that uh, even at last night's town halls, she was promised they'd come by and test her water. That hasn't happened. So that is still happening, but the Navy is working and and they're working as quickly as they can, they say, to test as much water as they can. So you are able to call five different numbers that the operations center emergency operations center at the base has set up we've been reporting those the easiest way to do that might be at the website they set up specifically for this we have a link uh, included in all of our coverage at hawaiinewsnow.com i do want to talk about where you can get potable water that's very important for people that need to again shower drink water things like that the navy has water trucks at five locations the halsey terrace community center nex parking lot Catlin Park Community Center, the Ohana Nui Hickam Mackay Rec Center, and then several other pop-up locations around AMR housing. Um, Those will be updated on social media. A lot of folks that live on base are already connected to the AMR housing social media pages, so Navy officials say that's probably the best bet to just find if there's any changes in locations or hours. But I mean, what a huge headache those folks are dealing with. Obviously, safety is number one, but just the daily grind of what you need clean water for, it's a real problem. I honestly can't even imagine dealing with that. It would be a huge hassle. And that was a lot of information there. We know that we've got it all typed up for you on your h H&M and digital platforms. Let's toss it over to Ashley now with more news. Now to the pandemic, the state health department is reporting 126 new COVID infections along with one more death. The breakdown of cases by island shows 52 on Oahu, 34 on Kauai, Maui has 18, the big island 17, and six residents were diagnosed out of state. Meanwhile, President Biden a short time ago announced plans his administration will take to tackle the Omicron variant. Deborah Alfaron has more. President Biden visited the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, to announce a new plan for those entering the country on international flights. Everyone, including those who are vaccinated, must now get tested for COVID a day before departing for the U.S. This tighter testing timetable provides an added degree of protection as scientists continue to study the Omicron variant. The president is also extending mask mandates on public transportation through mid-March. He'll launch family vaccination clinics and will require health insurers to cover the costs of at-home COVID tests. And he announced a nationwide campaign to get vaccinated people their booster shots. If you want to know exactly where to go, text your zip code to 438829 to find where you can get your booster shot now, now. The new measures unveiled by the administration come a day after the Omicron variant was first detected in the U.S. A traveler returned to the Bay Area in California after a trip to South Africa. Now a second case has been detected. A Minnesota man who attended an anime conference with tens of thousands of others at the Jacob Javits Convention Center in New York City. This individual, while they were vaccinated, they have very mild symptoms, and in fact those symptoms have already resolved. No other cases of the Omicron variant have been detected in New York State so far, but Governor Hochul says they are expected soon. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. Japan has retracted its ban on new incoming international flight bookings following heavy criticism that the new emergency rule was an overreaction to the news of the Omicron variant. The reversal came only a day after the new policy was announced. The transport ministry yesterday issued a request to international airlines to stop taking new reservations for flights coming into Japan until the end of December as a precaution. Japan has reported two cases of the variant. 
Well, as of yesterday, bars and restaurants on Oahu can operate at full capacity without that six feet of social distancing. Get this. This is the first time in 19 months that's been able to happen. Our Sammy Selena has been gathering new reaction. Businesses tell me these new rule changes will be a huge relief for them. Highway Inn hopes that this will help alleviate the long lines they've had in the evenings. Each table was six feet apart. And so now we've added tables in the middle, added more tables over there, as well as added more seats. Mark Taylor, the general manager, is happy that he can seat everyone for the lunch rush. Thank you. Enjoy. This is something restaurants have been looking forward to for a while. It was an appropriate time. I wish it would have been sooner, you know, but uh, I would, I would aside on cautionary. Now we have full capacity back in and the restaurants really, really need it. They also no longer have to keep contact information for customers, but the challenge ahead, hiring enough people to keep up with a full dining room. Uh, we've just hired about five to six people and we continue to hire. Um, we're going to need to hire some more people as well. It's the prep cooks, the fry cooks in the back that we're having a really hard time filling those positions. And there are folks still looking for work. A few of them showed up at the unemployment office. It's the first day of their reopening. If you have um, an issue with any of your un unemployment or any divisions that the Department of Labor addresses, they can come in and we will service them Wednesday through Friday of every week. The office's closure and long response times led to frustration over the course of the pandemic. But today, things went smoothly. Um, they asked to see my vaccination card, my ID. Um, they asked where I was going and then um, they let me in after they signed me in. Today is a really exciting day for us. And there's a whole lot of people that hope it stays this way. Sammy Solina, Hawaii News Now. Alec Baldwin says he did not pull the trigger of the gun that killed a cinematographer during the rehearsal of his movie Rust. The actor says in an upcoming interview that he has no idea how a real bullet was loaded into the gun. In fact, he says real bullets were not even supposed to be on the property. No one has been charged for the October 21st shooting, but the investigation is still ongoing. New at noon, scientists are getting up close and personal with Spain's La Palma Island volcano. Ian Lee joins us now with more on what they're hoping to learn. To study a volcano, scientists have to get dangerously close, all while keeping an eye out for falling lava bombs the size of watermelons as they try to nab the hot rock that's more than 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's been an exciting experience. It's been mind-blowing, literally, uh, to see many of these processes in action. They're taking the big risk, hoping to see big rewards, with answers to important questions like, how do these volcanic eruptions form, develop? And if you live on Spain's Canary Islands, where it's already destroyed thousands of homes, when will it end? We need to learn how we can protect the population and this is where this eruption has become very useful it teaches us some painful but important lessons for months the volcano has schooled scientists giving them opportunities to use their cutting edge technology to observe it from the land sea air and even outer space but despite constant surveillance we still really don't understand what's going on below the earth's crust we likely know more about the stars in the sky than what's happening under our feet, says this volcano expert. So scientists will continue to wear protective clothing and gas masks as they chase answers in the rivers of lava. Ian Lee, CBS News. And you know that volcano there in Spain has covered more than 3,000 acres wow. of land and I think more than 1,000 homes mm -hmm. lost. Nothing like that with our eruption here, but we are getting some amazing images in new today. Yeah, some new images from the Big Island. Let's take you there. Two months after the eruption at Halemaumau began, the U.S. Geological Survey captured this time-lapse footage of volcanic activity overnight. This was taken from November 30th to December 1st. Incredible. Yeah. I love watching the movement there at the summit. All right, guys, we got to also talk about the big developing news in the world of weather. You look outside right now and looking beautiful mm -hmm. as we take a live look at the reef runway. But things are changing very fast. And let's bring in Guy Hoggy for those details.
We're expecting a pretty nice day today. Uh, fairly dry conditions throughout the most of the day with variable winds. So ocean conditions will be nice. But heads up, there is a front that's approaching Kauai. That's going to be adding to the moisture that's uh, from that disturbance sitting over us. So look for increasing showers, especially on Kauai by tonight. Now the surf's uh, got a little bit of a boost for north and west shores. And with the light winds today, conditions are really nice, but too small. They have uh, postponed the Haleiwa Challenger. They'll wait for the waves to get even bigger. Now a giant swell is due in over the weekend. We're talking Saturday night into Sunday. High surf warning level waves going to come in. Big, dangerous beach erosion, uh, life-threatening conditions out there, but also stormy conditions because of the winds. But we're more concerned with the increasing rainfall. Spotty showers through tomorrow. We're talking about some spots of heavy rainfall, maybe even some thunderstorms firing up and flooding conditions on on Sunday and Monday for parts of the state. We've learned there will be a limited audience at the Merry Monarch Festival next year, but the tickets will not be sold to the general public. Organizers say they only have permission for a small number of tickets, so those will go to Halau and their families and long-standing supporters and sponsors of the festival. Festival officials say do not send in ticket requests. They will not be accepted. The prestigious Hula Festival will be held in April of 2022. All right, gang, let's get to a snack pack of stories we're finding on the feeds today, really. <laughs> and we're going to start with this. Not going to be Ashley's favorite. I'm sorry oh, with that gross. peanut allergy. I know, I know, I know. But social media users are reporting seeing these Reese's or Reese's, however you want to say it, new peanut butter cups with potato chips on store shelves. Breaking news. Huge, <laughs> huge, huge, huge. The treat was announced back in October. You might remember, I think we even talked about it, but Hershey's did not give us many details about when they would go on sale. Candy lovers have been super excited about these. Looking forward to the combination of chocolatey sweetness and savory salty flavors, which is really one of my favorite flavor combinations. It is a winning recipe that Reese's is capitalizing on from last year when they introduced peanut butter cups with pretzels. And I keep going back and forth. Reese's, Re Reese's, Reese's, Reese's. I still don't know. I think it's, Re I've heard Reese's, but I, I don't know because I, I don't know. eat them. I, well, but I don't could do see, it. I could see how people like that combo. It sounds, it sounds okay. Sounds really good. Yeah. Next story. Right. Making so you hungry. Burger King taking us back in time to the year 1957. That's when the Whopper was introduced on menus. Now, to celebrate hmm. the Whopper's 64th year of existence, the fast food chain is offering it up for its original price tomorrow and Saturday. Can you guess what that price was, Jonathan? I read the story, but it's uh, so cheap. <laughs> it's 37 cents, you guys. So again, tomorrow and Saturday. But here's the catch. You can't just walk up and demand a 37 cent Whopper. The deal is only available through Burger King's Royal Perks Rewards program. So you have to download the app. Uh -huh, there's always a catch. 37 sex cents, Six. guys. All right, one more food story for y'all. Yeah, so we've heard of ugly Christmas sweaters. Well, Panera is getting into the holiday spirit with a different kind of take on the festive tradition. Now, the bakery chain is releasing four ugly cups. Now, they feature misspelled reindeer, that's R-A-I-N, deer, a deformed gingerbread man, and a badly drawn snowflake. Panera teamed up with a popular TikToker for the designs, and the company says it wanted to bring customers joy and laughter this year, and a reminder that it's what's in the inside that oh. matters the most. Taking on Starbucks with their yeah. cups there. All right, big, big, big developments in the world of Major League Baseball. We're going to turn it over to Andrew Pear with more on that. The countdown to baseball spring training is now on hold. Contract talks between MLB players and owners are at a stalemate, and the owners are locking out their players for the first time since 1990. It's not a good thing for the sport. It's, it's not something um, that we undertake lightly. We, we understand it's bad for our business. We took it out of a desire to drive the process forward to an agreement now. In a statement, the players' union said in part that the lockout was specifically calculated to pressure players into relinquishing rights and benefits. Until the contract expired at midnight, players and owners had been trying to reach a deal on issues, including player pay, revenue sharing, and free agency rules. We're trying to make the game more competitive. Star pitcher Max Scherzer is one of the player representatives at the negotiating table. He spoke just hours before the lockout began. 
there's so many different ways uh, that we, as, as players as a whole, that we believe that we can make the, the, the game better. And we're absolutely, absolutely committed to doing that. Many see the lockout as strictly symbolic since spring training does not start until February. I think we're in a process. I'm prepared to continue that process. And I'm optimistic that, that, that we're going to get a deal. But until a deal is done, teams are not allowed to talk to players, make signings, or execute trades. Anthony Pura, CBS News, Los Angeles. Anthony, I'm so sorry for butchering your name so bad there. <laughs> but he did report and sent us some notes, and they say many of the clubs scrambled to get players ahead of this lockout mm -hmm. and signing freeze. Get this, they committed more than $1.9 mm -hmm. in new contracts. Mm -hmm. Huge. Huge. Oh, yeah. Well... This is very exciting. Four Broadway musicals, including Hamilton, are coming yeah. to Hawaii for the 2022-2023 season. Here's Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi announcing the exciting lineup. And the winner is, right? They told me to just do this impromptu and not really tell you what it is, but Jersey Boys. So I have to interrupt the flow with a, a note. As most of you know, the premiere of Jersey Boys was postponed, and a lot of hard work by the people sitting here from Blaisdell was necessary to get it rescheduled. Uh, I wasn't sure that it was going to be able to happen. It has happened, and just want everybody, Mayor, who has Jersey Boys tickets to know that if you already have Jersey Boys tickets, you do not need to purchase those tickets again. Cats. More than nine lives. Cats just keeps coming and coming. Yeah, it's incredible. You're next. Mm -hmm. The next show announced for the 2022-2023 season is... Beautiful. It's beautiful, the Carol King musical. Go. Yeah. And Mayor? <laughs> but you're going to like this one. Hamilton. There you go. That's great. So let's take a look at the season. Yeah. Very, very cool stuff there. So let's freeze this video. What of these have you seen, Ashley? Um, I've seen Cats. I've seen Jersey Boys. I have not seen Hamilton. I was going to watch it on, uh, was it Disney Plus? When yeah, it yeah. Out? I've seen but it I, on Disney yeah, Plus. Yeah, I have not seen it on Disney Plus yet. So I've not seen it. So I'm very excited it's coming. I got to be honest, it didn't live up to the hype for me, but maybe because I was watching it on the small screen. Mm -hmm. I think so often mm -hmm. those don't translate to home right. movie. Yeah. Well, and cats, we talked about it so much last year when their attempt oh. made it onto yes. the silver screen. And people, this should probably do better than that. And I love Carol King. Yeah, that's gonna be good. I think it's the local premiere for. I don't. Yeah. I don't think. I think it's fairly new musical. Yeah. You're so far away. <laughs> I love that song. Love that song. I think we have some time for one more story. Okay, this is pretty cool. So for Home Alone fans, there's a chance to live like Kevin McAllister from the hit holiday film. Now, Airbnb is renting out the Chicago area house where the 1990 movie was filmed, but it's for one night only. So those lucky guests will be treated to Chicago's finest pizza and a screening of the latest Home Alone movie. It'll be available to book next Tuesday for just 25 bucks. Again, it's just one night. Intruders that you have to fend off, those are not included. Oh, that's pretty cute. Yeah. I haven't watched that movie yet this year. It's always a classic. It's been a while for me. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, so good to have Ashley back in the house. <laughs> yes, fun show. You guys, she's going to be back at first at four. You don't want to miss that right here on KHNL. All the news updates from throughout the day. And don't forget, we have that newsletter you can sign up for. Get those headlines right to your inbox. Just go to your H&N digital platforms. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Aloha.